Snowmobiling is under threat. We are under the government microscope when it comes to the emissions of our snowmobiles and the impact that we have on the environment. Then we're under threat by the conservation movement that want to stop us from riding in certain areas because of the impact we're having on wildlife. We're also under threat from urban sprawl, where houses and businesses are standing now where we once rode snowmobiles. But perhaps the biggest threat of them all comes from within. And it's a simple one that we can solve all by ourselves. Just stay on the trail. It's been brought to us, it uh, first came up really out of Quebec, uh, they had a lot of issues with a lot of farmers traveling through, so it became an issue there and then it came to the CCSO table and uh, we've had some issues here in New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, so everybody across Canada is really concerned about where it's going to go and uh, as you know the private landowners makes up a lot of our trail system and without them uh, it would mean that we'd have a lot of disconnect in our major trail system. When you lose a section of trail that uh, connects your whole trail system, now you got to go searching, you got to go meet the landowner, see if you can work a deal out with him that he's going to be okay with everything. If not, now you got to go to another section of landowner, talk to that landowner, see if you can do the detour around there. And all this has to happen basically before July, before your map system comes out. Because that's another issue if the map system says the trail goes one way and then you get there and all of a sudden the trail's not there. Everybody depends on GPS's today to travel, so it's a major issue and it's a lot of extra work. It's not an easy problem to solve, but at the end of the day, you gotta be smart about it. Uh, enjoy what we got, and uh, manufacturers are making crossover sleds, and you can still drive on the groomed trail system, but respect the signage and respect the landowners that you're not out in the middle of their field tearing it all up. And go to the areas that's designated for backcountry or off-trail. There's lots of them out there. And we get it and we understand that the new generation come, coming in, the younger folks coming into the sport, which we need to keep the sport going, loves to buy these crossovers and backcountry and get out with their buddies and see how stuck they can get and take videos. That's all fine, but make sure you do it in a designated area that's there to do it. Don't jeopardize the sport for your own fun for a few minutes. It's probably more important than ever that we respect the signage and stay on the groomed trails. And the landowner today, they're a little iffy whether they still want you to go buy your land. So we have to work with them and we have to respect it. It's their land at the end of the day. So you need to respect the signage, stay on their trails and uh, don't jeopardize the sport for 10 minutes of fun because you want to go out in a farmer's field and do a bunch of S's or do some wheelies. Go to the designated areas that's designed for that. There's lots of room for both in this sport, so just respect the laws and we'll be okay. After a couple of days riding on the RAND Tour, an adventure that takes us through multiple districts over multiple club trails, you really do get an appreciation of the amount of work it takes to be able to build a system where you can do a tour like this. Now, if it wasn't for the countless volunteers donating their time into the system, we wouldn't be able to ride like we do. It's precious, and we need to thank them. That's why when one person rips a line off through a farmer's field, not only are we running the risk of losing that trail, we're also running the risk of losing a volunteer who's simply fed up that people simply can't follow the rules. Without the volunteers, we wouldn't have what we have today. That's a no-brainer, that's definitely true. Uh, volunteers, it's getting a little harder and harder for volunteers. The, uh, the average age of the volunteers has been people that's been there for 30, 40 years, so they're getting up in age 70. So we have a little gap to work on to bring the younger generation in to fill that gap. Uh, we've got a little bit of work left to do there, and I think that's pretty well right across Canada in any organization. But uh, the volunteers have certainly made the sport, and uh, they're the biggest part of it, and uh, it's always fun. And make sure to thank them. That's the big thing. A lot of times you just take it for granted, but. A thank you goes a long ways. 
Well, the neat thing about volunteering is how many people you meet in a run of a day. And everybody's different and you hear everybody's stories. So it's never two days the same because you're always dealing with different people. So it's a good experience and uh, the contacts you make and the people you meet from all over the world. Uh, I volunteer countless hours, I always have. And somebody said, well, why do you do that? Like you don't have any free time. Well, I enjoy what I'm doing and I'm glad to be able to give back and help out for the people that's laid it down for us when we started this sport. You know, uh, we often go into meetings or you'll be in a warm and hot and you hear the, the criticism of some, well, why didn't you do this, why didn't you do that? Well, I got a message for you guys out there. Everybody needs volunteers. And if you think you can do a better job, the door's wide open, we will never lock it on you. Come on out and help us make it better together. On behalf of everyone at OSM and STV, I want to thank volunteers across the snow belt for the time they dedicate to snowmobiling.